Yeah, we're back in the sticks here. The roads just keep getting narrower and narrower, but uh, you know, we're not that far from Walker, Minnesota. You get up in this area, obviously, and all anybody ever talks about is Leech Lake. But, you know, off the beaten path here in northern Minnesota, there's some tremendous fishing on some of these small lakes, particularly for panfish and bass. And right now, there's a 25 mile an hour wind. Beauty about this area is you can tuck back in these little lakes back in the woods here, and uh, a lot of times have them all to yourself. Look at that. That is a big thing there, Al. That's that a thing. We're back in northern Minnesota by Walker and you know, you look at Leech Lake, Leech Lake it's a lot of notoriety, it's been one of the best walleye fisheries in the last five years and you know, walleyes attract a lot of attention, Minnesotans love their walleyes but you know in this area the bass often get overlooked and uh, Leech Lake is one of the best largemouth bass lakes around but besides Leech Lake there's so many different small lakes around here too that offer some tremendous bass fishing. There he is, there Al. Go. Good show. Oh, he's doing it. Wonderful. <laughs> that is cool, huh? It's a nice fish, Chase. Or a left-hander. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice <laughs> bass. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. He sucked it in. Boy, look at that. You can't even <laughs> see that fury pop. Oh, he popped good. Just, just smoked it. That is cool. Top water bass. I don't know if there's anything more exciting than that right there. Look at that. That's just a gorgeous fish. Look at how much that bait is buried. That is just so cool. I will <laughs> never get tired of catching a fish no. on a popper. That's just good stuff. Love the smell of bass on the hands in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's one. Good fish, Al? Oh, I don't know. A little bit of drag there. Pretty sight. <laughs> Boy, they were pretty fish. She definitely ate it. Just a little piece of skin. Nice. You know, I love catching bass on top waters and you know, typically right away in the morning, you know, and that sun's starting to rise, there's a little bit of fog on the water. I mean, that's one of my favorite times of the day, one of my favorite times to be fishing and uh, I can't help myself but, you know, want to throw a top water during that time. And you know, that window might not be very long, you know, maybe half an hour, 45 minute window of tops and that sun gets a little bit higher and, you know, those fish pulls down in those weeds a little more where, you know, they might not be accessible for top waters. And so a lot of times our presentation's changing throughout the day where we'll start out throwing top waters and then as the day progresses, we might have to, you know, switch to soft plastics and start switching to weedless presentations where we can fish more in the weeds. But uh, that presentation can be a moving target. Get back more. Good fish. Well, that feels like it. Gonna jump. Whoa. <laughs> Dogging you. Yeah. I'm gonna pull us out here. That wind's kind of blowing yeah. us up on the bank here. I'm gonna reach down and grab him. Yeah, for you. you're gonna play the game for me. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, these fish just have nice, dark, beautiful, nice. beautiful color, aren't they? Black, yeah. This is dark, dark. Fish. What I'm fishing with here, as you can see, is a Kalen wacko worm. And uh, it's got a perfect weight to it. It's balanced really nice with an O-ring which is slid across the top. And then we're using a uh, Gamagatsu uh, circle hook on here with fluorocarbon liter, 15 pound, uh, attached to it. And it really gives it a nice, nice flutter and the fish can't resist it. And the technique that I'm using is basically just letting it go down slow first, but then giving it a couple little flicks and then pause. And they can't handle that after that pause. Seems like that's when they're whacking it. And they're taking it in, boy. There's no problem with that. You'll feel it. You know, I've long loved 
Fishing Leech Lake. It's a place I brought my family to. You know, you've got the Main Street and Walker, and uh, there's just a lot of nice family resorts. You know, obviously Leech Lake is a is a renowned fishery, and you know, a lot of times when I think of Leech Lake, I'm thinking of the walleye fishing. And we've filmed a lot of walleye shows on Leech Lake over the past. There's phenomenal musky fishing. There's panfish. What often goes unsaid, probably one of the best kept secrets in the entire area, is not just Leech Lake proper, but all the small lakes all around Leech Lake that are within, say, a half hour drive that are just loaded with really quality fishing opportunities, especially for panfish and bass. What is it? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there's one. <laughs> That's a good fish. That's yeah. a big fish, big fish. Take the drag. <laughs> Coming up. There you go. Okay. It's the one we're looking for. Boy, that's like a good, that's heavy big. bass right there. Yeah, that's a heavy bass. There. Oh yeah, that's a dandy one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That is that a is dandy a pig. there, Al. That's that a is pig. A, that that's is what a, we're looking for that right is there. A great fish. Look at that. That is just a gorgeous bass. For Minnesota, that is just huge. Man, that was a good fight. Oh, man. Boy, when you can fit a softball in their mouth, that's just a that's huge fish. Huge. Healthy fish, oh, too. Man. Not beat up at all, you know, just pretty. They are pretty. Get that fish in the water. Great work, Al. We'll take it. Cool, Al. That was all right. That was that's, cool. That's uh, what I like is when they uh, pull that drag like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of tells you it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, when you when you can't move it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, the nice thing about up here where there's so many lakes, and other than Leech Lake, we've got these little lakes that don't get touched. And these bass in here have got all the food. They're full of bluegills, crappies, you know, and lots of different kinds of minnows. So uh, you find quality bass just like you saw right here. A lot of the lakes up here right now are catch and release, uh, more and more all the time. And what we're seeing now, just like all over, is that great big uh, numbers of smallmouth are starting to go too. This one doesn't have any smallmouth in it, but some of them do. And um, Leech Lake is going to turn out, I think, to be just like a Mille Lacs in the years to come because it's, uh, the numbers are really, really building up quick. Uh, the reason I like uh, the bass is, uh, is the fight. There's nothing like... Uh, you know, that, that, I think of the smallmouth particularly, they're really feisty, but the largemouth, when you get into quality fish, above pound, two pound fish, you got a really a good battle, and uh, that's what I like. I, it's not something where you just reel in and put it in the boat. Oh, oh there he is, there he is. Wow, that fish, that's just, a fish just drilled it. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a chunk. That is a chunk of a bass right there. Look at that. That is just a great fish right there. And I'm just using a, that's just a Kalen's Wacko Worm jig hook. Just got a little bit of weight on there, so I'm just going to fish a little bit deeper. Al's throwing up along the shallow break. I'm going to fish the deep break here until we just see if we can put a pattern together. But that is just a tank of a bass right yeah, that's there. That's a nice fish. Yeah, just get her in the water here. Thank you. That was fun. That was fun. You know, and I started out with a baby bass color, which is one of my favorite Kalen's colors, and uh, seems to work everywhere. But Caught a couple fish on that black and blue, so I switched up to a black and blue and just got hit too. And so half the pattern each day is figuring out the depth, you know, the type of spots these fish are in, and then the, the details and the colors and the presentation. But I think we're starting to dial it in, Al. Yeah, it's it, pattern's going good. Besides that, uh, the quality is 
pretty decent right now. Yeah, we're we started some out nice there fish. with a little bit slow to start with, but those are worms are working really, really, really good. Yeah, you know, I just love exploring these little lakes here. You know, some of these lakes are pretty undeveloped. You know, this here lake is surrounded by a lot of state forest land, and so you know you have to get down some pretty narrow roads sometimes, and you know the boat ramps might not be much. It's really perfect for small boats, but boy, talk about some tremendous, tremendous fishing in this area. And you know the beauty of it is these lakes don't get fished much. And so everything that looks fishy usually has fish, but it's just classic bass fishing. You got lily pads, you've got wild rice, all kinds of vegetation to fish. There might be a little bit of flooded timber in some of these lakes, a little bit of you know trees laying down in the water and some stumps to fish, but it's just classic bass fishing. You can use Carolina rigs, you can use Texas rigs, weedless spoons, spinner baits, frogs, topwaters, you know, just a lot of different ways to catch fish out here. When you come up to our area up here in the Leech Lake area, uh, there's so many lakes and so many different conditions that you're going to run into. Like today, we really have a wind developing now. It was slow this morning, but now it's building up. Bring everything. And what we mean there is, you know, with spoons, with tubes, uh, with worms. Lots of times you're going to have to go top water. Crankbaits for the edges in those lakes where you got a distinct cabbage break. So bring it all with. Never know what you're going to have. And then Start with, in the boat, if there's several people, two different things or three different things until you get that pattern established. And that's what we've done now. It's taken us a while here to figure it out, but things have gone pretty well now. You know, there's a couple of different ways you can work these wacko worms. You can use an unweighted hook. That requires a little bit of patience in the sense you have to fish a little slower and let it fall. I'm fishing a little faster here and letting it fall down the break a little further with just a little bit of weight on the jig. We're just trying to see where these fish are positioned. They're definitely off this weed line break where you've got shallow water that just drops off into deeper 10 foot water right behind the boat and they're just on that break and just trying to figure out where they're positioned, which you know that's gonna be changing throughout the day as the sun changes. There he is, Al. Good show. Jump out Good of show. Oh, oh yeah, nice, there he goes. Nice, nice. <laughs> Jump out of her? Yeah. Sitting on the edge. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, definitely. I'm just gonna lift them up here. Come on up here. These fish are just so healthy. They don't lack girth, do they? No, not a bit. I know that they've got a great uh, food supply in here. Uh, Jason, they've got little crappies, bluegills, you know, and there's also species of minnows in here, so they're doing well. They haven't missed too many meals. All right, well. Good show. I think we're figuring them out. On the edge again? Yep. Looks like he was right there. Right on the edge of some of that dollar weed. Yeah. Well, we figured that out. They weren't in the shallows. The smaller fish were in there, some in there, but these bigger fish are around. And they've got nice deep water boy here in the middle of this thing. You know, I think a lot of anglers would be floored by the quality of bass fishing in a lot of these places here in northern Minnesota. And you know, you look at you know a lot of the water that's around Leech Lake. Leech Lake itself is a renowned bass fishery in the sense that there's just these massive wild rice beds that uh, you know can really hold some really big fish. But then you look at all the small water, and you know it just gives you more options. So if it's windy, you know if there's something that's not happening, you can just go right down the road ten miles, five miles, and and find a whole different lake that uh, has entirely different patterns and uh, you can always duck out of the wind, you can duck out of the weather, it just, you know, the options are tremendous and if you're flexible and just be an opportunist, you can experience some incredible fishing in this area. There's one. Good fish, Al? I don't, oh, don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, I just had one hit me too. That's just acting different there? here. I don't know. Good fish, I think. That's a big fish. Probably. Al. A little bit of drag there. Close up oh. those pads here. I just want to see it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> come on, girl, come on up. Come on up. I saw a part of it. Oh yeah, that's a huh? nice fish. Good fish? Good fish. Another thing. 
She just sucked it in. Boy. Right in the core of the wall. That circle hook works so well for these wacko worms. Yeah. Just a big heavy hook that you can lay the wood to. Yeah. Nice work. We'll take them. Yeah, absolutely Fun. we will. Nothing wrong with that bass. The nice thing about this routine is with this circular hook in the O-ring, I don't know how many fish I've caught on this thing, but you don't lose the worm every time the fish bites. That's the nice thing about it. And that'll stretch out and they're taking it in. And if you look, notice the last fish, he was really hooked in the proper spot. But this works slick. I bet you we've caught five fish, six fish on this thing now and I uh, haven't been bit off, and, this, and the worm still looks good. You know, with fishing so often, there is no silver bullet. You know, it's just a process of elimination where you try something, and if that doesn't work, you try something else. It's that simple. So often with bass fishing, when these fish are buried in these weed lines, the sun's changing all the time. Those shadows and shade areas are changing all the time. And so where those fish are positioned in that weed bed is changing. On top of that, you know, you might spook some fish with the boat. You might give some of those fish a little bit of an education in the sense that you might catch a few fish and these fish remember certain lures. And so, you know, we're just trying different things and just trying to make that bait look differently all the time. But as a general thumb, you know, a lot of times you're just trying to fish weedless and you're just trying to think where those fish position and how can I get something in front of those fish where it's not getting fouled or weeded up. This is the one we've been looking for. Baby, you're up. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> wow. Very good. I could hardly lift yeah, her I out of there. Yeah, I can pole bend, look at that. Yeah, look at that. I kind of switched up to this drop shot here, getting a little bit later in the day here. I just wanted to come up this break here, and follow it down a little more here and see if they're holding a little deeper. Boy, she is barely hooked, barely hooked. There we go. Nice. Look at that. Good job. Look at that. Yeah, she's barely hooked. Just a small tungsten weight. That same wackle worm, wacky rig, just working it deeper down the break. But beautiful fish right there. You know, this drop shot rig is pretty simple. Just 15 pound fluorocarbon. Still like the paler or not better than anything. That's just a wide gap gamakatsu. Wacky rigging that wackle worm. And then down here, that's a, just a tungsten weight. And you know, you get in this type of situation, I don't know if the tungsten's such a big deal, but whenever you get over a hard bottom, say around wood or rocks, I think that tungsten's a lot louder than lead. And so that's one of the reasons that uh, tungsten works so well. And then that, and it, it just for the mass, it's heavier than lead. And so it just makes your presentation a lot more sensitive. So a lot of times we're using presentations that you can fish in or around the weeds, whether it's using a drop shot on the outside edge or using a wacky worm or a Texas rig or even a Carolina rig and fishing weedless more into the weeds. But uh, it's all about the weeds and more specifically, it's all about the shade because, you know, these fish are just in those dark spots. And so a lot of times you're trying to envision where that sun's at and you're trying to envision where those shadows are and where those dark spots are, that thick cover, those fish are going to be right in the bottom of it. There she comes. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Somewhere in that <laughs> pile of weeds is a nice bass. Yes, there is. <laughs> Boy, look at all that. Oh, respectable bass. Nice, yeah. This gorgeous fish. Couldn't build a healthier looking bass on that right there, you know what? You know, Jace, there's no deviation in the color of these fish. They're also dark yeah. in the back. Every one of them, they're blending into that mucky bottom that we got here. Yeah, just typical bog wake. Yep, that's for sure. You know, I've known Al Moss for years, and uh, you know, when I was a kid growing up, you know, Al was one of the one of the top guides in northern Minnesota, and uh, you know, just a gentleman on top of it, and uh, a great fisherman. In you know, what amazes me about Al is just how versatile he is. You know, he's at home musky fishing. He can walleye fish with the best of them and uh, loves to fish for panfish and bass. And, uh, 
you know, we've often joked, you know, obviously in northern Minnesota, if you're a fishing guide, you have to do a lot of walleye fishing, but uh, there were so many days where I talked to Al and on his day off, or if he went out fishing in the evening and just took his wife out, a lot of times it'd be bass fishing, and why? Because it's just so much fun. <laughs> All right. Al, that is Good a show. dandy right there. There, nice. That is just a gorgeous fish, look at that. Minnesota has some tremendous bass fishing, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. There. Nice. Ooh, wow. Nice. That's impressive. That is impressive. These are big fish. That's big fish. <laughs> Good fight out of that one. Boy, <laughs> yeah, oh boy. That one, you were telling off. that one what I to do. I thought it was weed. <laughs>